We are back 735, now 25 minutes till 8 o'clock, KQRS, Nutramost, Twin Cities in Plymouth, is bringing you more of the KQ Morning Show. Please welcome Executive Director of the Gold Star Ride Foundation. You're about to ride a long way in about, what, starting in about two weeks, huh? Just a little over two weeks, yeah. A little over yeah. two weeks. Tony Price in studio with us. Uh, explain what the Gold Star Ride is for people. We talk about it quite a bit on the show and on the podcast, of course, but uh, explain what it is to people who might not have heard about it. Well, let me start with uh, what a gold star, what it means to, to get a gold yeah. star. Yeah. Uh, so if it, it started about 100 years ago in World War I, but uh, uh, basically gold star families are families that uh, somebody j- volunteered for the military and came home in a box. So if there was a funeral in the family, that family is, is uh, honored with a gold star. So that's where the designation comes from. And we call it the Gold Star Ride Foundation because... We use motorcycles to go visit these families and, and um, give them a little respect, a little honor, a little uh, education money. And uh, we do what we can to take care of them and, and help them get through the things that they're struggling to get through. Yeah, I, I, you and I have talked many times about uh, how some of the families uh, take it. I'm sure it's very, very difficult for, for all of them. Some people handle things differently, but... I'm sure you gotta you got to deal with people that turn to puddles a lot, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. You know, if you ever want to see 100 bikers in tears, you want to come with us when we go visit one of the families. Yeah. yeah. Um, because, you know, generally we'll have 100 bikers with us when we show up. And, uh, you know, anybody out there who's listening who rides a bike, yeah, you just come and join us. It's not like other rides. You don't have to pay 30 bucks to join us or anything. Riders ride free. Um, so we, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of neat when you see 100 Leather bound, bandana wearing people <laughs> crying in your yeah. front yard. Have you ever driven that far before? I mean, a long, long ways. Well, I average about ten thousand miles a year on my bike. Okay, um, which I think is a little above average for somebody who rides in Minnesota. So this would be, but two years condensed into seven weeks. Better two and a half. Two and a half years. Two and a half years weeks. condensed into seven weeks. But you know, I I think about this and. And, and I, to put it into perspective, and, and, you know, people ask me all the time, say, what's motivating you to do such a crazy thing? Well, what's motivating me to do the crazy thing is what they did, what, what their family did, what the person did who, who volunteered to go defend our country. I mean, you know, what I'm doing, even with uh, my military disabilities and everything, riding that motorcycle, what I'm doing is nothing compared to them. You know, it's amazing. My brother's in the United States Marine Corps during the, in the Vietnam era. And they couldn't find him for a couple of days. I remember, like three days, they couldn't find him. My mother went into the big one. It was unbelievable. She was so upset. And they eventually did find him uh, because, you know, they went out into the out into the jungle or wherever they go out, and they, and they don't come back for a few days. But, uh, I don't know, it was right around his birthday or it was right around sometime, but they couldn't find him for three days. And my mother, I thought she was going to, croak i really did she was very upset so i can't even imagine when you get the news how bad it is i was in the marine corps but it was peacetime and i was gone for three or four days it was a whole different story <laughs> yeah that was a different deal though. yeah it was a lot of problems after that <laughs> you were at the schwiel hut That's yes a whole i was at the schwiel hut tony price the gold star ride foundation in studio um so you said it's gonna take you seven weeks a map of your route so uh man that's a lot of riding but you're gonna see everything that's great about the United States of America. We are, and we're actually planning to record as much of it as we can. One of our corporate sponsors is GoPro Cameras, so they gave us a whole bunch of these cameras. We're going to record everything along the way. We've got a production company that's going to turn it into a documentary movie, and uh, the plan is 26 episodes of documentary television that they're going to create for us. And we want to put a lot of stuff into that uh, besides... The, the actual families that we go see and, you know, the the highway spinning past the wheels as we go down the road, we want to put in, you know, we're going to spend some time at the Grand Canyon. We're going to look at some monuments in Washington, D.C. We're going to see a couple of museums along the way. There's a Harley Museum we want to see in South Carolina. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of military, um, uh, mi- you know, the, the we want to see, like, the, the Vietnam Wall and, Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And every state has different um, memorials and monuments set up, and we want to see as many of those as we can, too. Hey, do you have a a restaurant sponsor, like a national chain, so that you can maybe 
show them you're eating there in your documentaries and get a lot of money from them? Uh, food? We're talking to a lot of them, but they all have a tendency to be really slow and, and bureaucratic. You better and pick up the pace. You're leaving in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the meantime, we're talking to all the mom and pop places where we're going to stop. Okay. And they are a, much quicker to respond and, and very welcoming. So we just no, call just up look. a local mom and pop restaurant in any town. We know when we're going to get there, and and uh, we've got a logistics team that's going to stay here in, in the Twin Cities, and they'll be calling them up and saying, "We know where they are at. They'll be there in thirty minutes." Oh, great! Do you so, have a rain suit? Do you have a rain suit? Actually, I do not. However, get one, a rain suit. <laughs> uh, Helmethouse dot com is another one of our corporate sponsors, and they just put a truckload of gear in it. Okay, and and they're shipping it out to us. So I'll have a rain suit, right. but it's. My thought is that my skin is a rain suit, so why I do know, I? No, but you've ridden before. You know how miserable it could be when you're wet and cold. Uh, oh. Yeah, but I, I don't see that changing with a rain suit. Have you oh, looked to where it's tornado still, season? Uh, I, I have. As a coincidence, when I was in the Navy, my job was weather forecaster. Oh, so, well, you're good then. So, yeah, I spent a lot of time uh, chasing tornadoes for the Navy. Uh, yeah, I imagine so, that's true. So that, that's another the, thing that the logistics team but that's staying back here is going to do is they're going to be monitoring the weather all the time. And if we have to ride right through something, they're going to see if they can reroute us to go around it instead of through it. Now, literally, the only state you're not going to hit is Hawaii for obvious reasons, but you are going to hit Alaska. Uh, the plan is to hit Alaska. But, uh, you know, on, on Wednesday on your podcast, we, it came up in conversation that we may have some – technical difficulties to get to alaska that we can't overcome things like oh, the really? people on the crew that don't have passports so or the people right. in canada oh, won't let us get yeah. in there yep. or we don't have phone service or gps for the cameras and there's there's some quite a few things still going on we're planning to go to alaska though i think it's fant- i thought for sure because we're talking bikers and nothing against bikers they just like to have a good time but I know if mm-hmm. you've had a DUI, Canada doesn't want you coming. Oh, well, they want nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they actually See, they don't. You have to pay. They 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 make you pay to come in. Is what they do. Oh, they do. Got, you I have to buy a ticket well, to get into this country. Actually, yes. So these are some <laughs> of the things. Hilarious. Yeah, those are some of the things that we have to uh, get figured out to make sure that we can yeah, make I it up to Alaska. It looks when, because of you know just the, the way the country lays out. You're going to spend the most time in Maine and Florida. It looks like because you have to double back. Uh, we're have, going to have to double back through Pennsylvania as well. Um, oh, Pen- yeah. Pennsylvania right, is the only state that, yeah, I think that's the only state that we have to go through twice, like five days yep. apart. Yep, it looks like it. Uh, You're absolutely right. And maybe a little tiny bit of New York, but not much. Uh, yeah, you do go through the, 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 the southern tip of uh, of New York. Well, now, listen, uh, when you're looking at that map, I, I, need to, I need to say that that map is – is kind of put out to give you a general idea, to give people no, a I general idea. That, sure, I understand that. I don't think we're going to be following that line exactly. Uh, no, and no, I not agree. to mention, we put that line together before we knew which Gold Star families we were going to go see. Oh, yeah. So, and, yeah. yeah, and because confidentiality and stuff, we don't want to publish that stuff. In fact, nobody's going to know, aside from me and the logistics team, nobody's going to know where we're going until we get there. That's great. Um, That's wonderful. And, you know, you mentioned your brother being missing in Vietnam earlier. And a primary example of that is if you look at that map, when we get to Arkansas, it just that red line just has a skirt along the eastern st- side of the state. Right. Yep. But uh, we're going to go see a what we call in a Gold Star family in, in Arkansas. And that story was it's a Vietnam story. And the the story goes that the. Three helicopters were flying in formation over a rice field, and one of them got shot down. And the other two went, landed as well, and one guy volunteered to go look for survivors. And he comes back to his helicopter, and he announces that there's no survivors. And he's going to go to the other helicopter and inform them. And while he's running in between the helicopters, both of them took off, and they, he was never seen again. Oh, oh Still man. to this day. Now, I, I think I told you that story in a podcast about a month ago, Tom, when yep, we were talking. Yep. And at yep. that time, we were going to go see his sister. Well, comes to find out that about six weeks ago, she passed away from brain cancer. Uh, However, oh she has two sons who are about the same age as Andy. And um, her two sons have picked up the torch, and they are now going every other year. They still go back. The, the sister went back. I think she ended up going back about 15 or 16 times looking for him. And now they've gone. The sons have taken up the torch, and they've gone back, I think, uh, two or three times so far, and and they're not going to stop. They're just not going to stop until they find something. 
That's wonderful. I mean, it's it's an amazing story. What you guys are doing, men and women are going, aren't they? Oh, sure. We let anybody on tour of three wheels come with us. In fact, we had... Two or three. Well, there's just got a lot of guys like to ride trikes. Uh, Oh, those those spiders are the two front wheels. Oh, they're actually really cool looking. Yeah, and I've heard good things about them. I've never ridden one myself. I'm somebody who likes to lean to the left and the right when I'm going on a corner, so I don't want three wheels under me. That it's it's a whole different style of riding, and I'd have to relearn how to ride. So I'm going to stay on two wheels as much as I can. But uh, bringing that up, that's a Vietnam family. That's a Gold Star family from a from the Vietnam era, and I wanted to mention Mm -hmm. that you know there's an awful lot of uh, veterans organizations that draw the line at nine eleven. I myself, for really? example, yeah, I myself, I came back as a, a you know, from the Navy in 91, uh, right after the first Gulf War air war started. That's when I came home from the Navy. And, um, you know, I came home with a disability and I called a couple of them up and I said, hey, can you help me out with anything? And they said, well, when did you serve? And I said, oh, I got out in 91. And they said, oh, no, we only help those that served after 9-11. <laughs> Only, what? So, you know, there's interesting things going on with different charities and stuff. And I wanted to mention this today, too. Uh, you know, you, Tom, you were helping a great charity yesterday. As as a matter of fact, my wife was there also helping that same charity. She was looking for you, but she didn't see you. Um, no, they had me jump running all over the joint. Yeah, so they, I'm sorry I didn't see you because I love your wife. Man. Yeah, she, she had cigars for you on the third tee, I think, or the third green. Oh, man. See? Anyway. <laughs> well, see, you got to take the bad with the good, right? That's true. Yes. Um, <laughs> anyhow, what, what I wanted to say about all these other charities, and nice one like the, the one that you were helping yesterday, is all of these charities, every charity in the United States, and they all do good work, but all of them have to look to the military uh, and say thank you because we couldn't have any charities in this country if we didn't have the military. Yep. So I, I just kind of wanted to point that out. And, and, you know, so that's our organization takes care of military families because they're forgotten by everybody else. I mean, as a disabled vet, the VA takes care of me and anybody else that's a, you know, they try to take care. There's a lot of them that fall through the cracks, but they, they do, they've done pretty good by me. And a lot of that is through help that I've gotten from the American Legion, another phenomenal uh, fraternal organization, the American Legion. Right. So. Uh, anytime they're having a fish fry, you might want to stop by and get a sandwich from them or whatever they're doing. Um, incidentally, I think it's okay for me to say this. We're planning and, and we're hoping that we can put together the logistics for this, but the American Legion is celebrating their 100th anniversary this year and their national convention is here in Minneapolis. And it starts the, it starts the same day that we get back. So we're trying to work it out so we can take, like, 150 motorcycles right into downtown Minneapolis and park them in front of the convention center for for the day that we get back. Good luck so. finding parking. <laughs> <laughs> That's Even really nice. Motorcycles. <laughs> well, Ladies and we'll gentlemen, we'll just... Tony Price, ex- executive director of the Gold Star Ride Foundation. This summer, the Gold Star Ride Foundation will take care of 100 families in 49 states on an ambitious ride that kicks off in just a little over two weeks. You can go to goldstarride.org to find out a lot more. Tony, uh, you'll be coming to the podcast, I'm sure, just before you leave, right? I, I will, and I do have one other thing I'd like to mention today if we get sure. a couple more seconds here. Yep. I ran into uh, somebody last Friday evening after dinner, or, and we were sipping on a single malt, and uh, uh, the, this person said to me, uh, well, are you meeting your financial goals? Are you able to get this thing done? And I said, well... We're going to get it done, but, you know, we're a little bit short on the financial goals. And he said, well, I'll tell you what. You raise as much money as you can for seven days, and I'll match it in the name of all the donors. Oh, so anybody, uh, you got until midnight tonight, so it's, it's kind of the last-minute stuff. And, you know, I got to tip my hat to uh, Lastman because he got me on here this morning to talk about this. But anybody who donates until midnight tonight, the donation amount that you give us will be doubled on your receipt for your taxes. And, of course, we are 501c3, so everything is tax deductible. So if you donate That's a buck, good. you get a receipt for two. If you donate 100 you get a receipt for 200 If you donate 1000 you get a receipt for 2000 And it, That's a wonderful thing. Yep, and it's all uh, real easy to spot on our website, goldstarride.org. Uh, the very first page talks about the, the double-year donation thing. Yep. 
It's a wonderful thing. I'll talk to you uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks on the podcast, and it's uh, it's been great. This whole thing, and I didn't know Tony Price was married to a friend of mine until I found out. <laughs> he told me later. So the whole thing really, really worked out really well because I really admire your wife. She's a very hardworking woman and a very pleasant, very nice. I don't know how you and I did it with our wives, but it happened. Well, I know I married yeah. up. And, you know, she's a hard worker, like you said. She's actually on an airplane right now to go to a golf course in Kansas City. And yeah, that's what she does. She, yep. She's and all over the place. And she'll Amazing. be, yep, she's just there for the day, and she'll fly back tonight. Goldstarride.org, Tony Price, thank you, sir. Thank you.